Yesterday was a difficult day for law enforcement personnel in Missoula, as it was the eighth anniversary of the death of Missoula Police Sergeant Bob Hindley. Spokesman Travis Welsh has details. It was on February 12th, 2010, that retired Missoula Police Department Sergeant Bob Hindley passed away unexpectedly due to complications from being shot in the line of duty on October 21st, 1998. He was an exceptional officer, an exceptional human being, and one that was taken from us way too soon. Welsh said Hindley was not just a friend, but an inspiration to all. He just had a, a lust for life. Uh, he didn't let things get him down. He was always very positive, very upbeat, uh, loved to visit with people. Uh, it just continued to be a, a contributing member of our community until the day of his death. The man responsible for Sergeant Hindley's wounds and eventually his death from those wounds is James Martin. He's currently serving life plus 100 years at the Montana State Prison for attempted deliberate homicide in the shooting of Sergeant Hindley at a Missoula parking lot. A routine traffic stop over a missing taillight Friday, February 9th, ended with a Missoula police officer and a suspect going to the hospital. Once again, police spokesman Travis Welsh said the encounter began on North Russell. The driver was identified as 45-year-old Jody Bennett. Mr. Bennett was recognized by officers as, as having a criminal history and to be associated with drug activity. They requested to search Mr. Bennett's vehicle. He refused. A uh, request for a canine team went out to have the dog go over the exterior of the vehicle. However, when the officer arrived, Mr. Bennett put the car in gear and attempted to drive away. The car spun out on the ice at first and didn't go far before crashing near the intersection of Montana and Johnson. He crashed into a parked car and then attempted to flee the officers on foot. An officer had gotten out of a vehicle at one point and chased him on foot and eventually caught up with him and tackled him, resulting in Mr. Bennett being taken into custody. He did suffer some minor injuries as a result and was transported to the hospital. Bennett reportedly continued to resist arrest even after being tackled to the ground. And his mugshot reveals scrapes and bruises on the right side of his face. Officials later found methamphetamine on Bennett's person, and he now faces seven charges, including four felonies for criminal endangerment, escape, causing serious bodily injury to an officer, and drug possession. The officer suffered a hand injury and was treated and released. A federal prosecutor nominated to fill a judge's vacancy in the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is under fire after opinion pieces he wrote as a college student mocking multiculturalism serviced. The Oregonian Oregon Live reports liberal judiciary advocacy group Alliance for Justice says Ryan Bounds' writings, quote, reveal strong biases that call into question his ability to fairly apply the law and to main con maintain confidence in the justice system's ability to dispense even-handed justice to all, end quote. Bounds, who wrote for the student-run newspaper The Stanford Review while attending Stanford, apologized Friday for his, quote, misguided sentiments, end quote. Bounds, a politically conservative assistant U.S. attorney in Portland who now chairs the Multnomah Bar Association's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, disavowed the pieces in an email he sent to committee members. The 2017 Sunrise Fire in Mineral County made it to the top of the national priority list for a time. Resident Jay Alexander was evacuated during the incident and returned home to find his land ablaze, not by the Sunrise Fire, but by a backburn set to help fight the fire. We came around the, the corner on the road right on the northern edge of our property. And as far as we could see, which is pretty close to a mile, our entire property was on fire. Okay, completely on fire. And I, I was devastated. I pulled to the side of the road. and I was like, my God, what is going on here? And my wife started crying. Alexander said he never gave permission for his land to be burned and that log decks that had been cut, piled, cut and piled rather, were set ablaze intentionally. He estimates the backburn cost him tens of thousands of dollars. Based on the fact that the logger estimated there were at least 30 truckloads of logs that would have been pulled out of there, it becomes easily seventy-five to $80,000. And before we talk about the fact that the market's gone in the toilet now because the Forest Service is flooding the market with logs with their salvage logging from the fire, MSU Extension Forestry Professor Peter Kolb says Alexander had invested personal resources in managing his section of the forest. After examining the damage on the ground, Kolb said the backburn was unnecessary. There was someone in charge of his sector there that took it upon himself to do something, and I don't know whether it was uh, sanctioned by the IC team or not, to burn his property as a backburn without Jay's permission, 
And when you look at everything he done, he had done everything to reduce the fire risk on his property and make it more resilient. There was no need to burn his property. Kolb said he's seen a number of incidents in recent years where forest fire backburning encroaches unnecessarily on private property owners. Alexander is considering pursuing the issue in court. The Interior Department says it's replacing an Obama-era regulation aimed at restricting harmful methane emissions from oil and gas production on federal lands. A rule being published in the Federal Register this week will replace the 2016 rule with requirements similar to those in force before the Obama administration changed the regulation. Interior had previously announced it was delaying the Obama-era rule until January of 2019, arguing the rule was overly burdensome to industry. Officials said the delay would allow the Federal Bureau of Land Management time to review the earlier rule while avoiding tens of millions of dollars in compliance costs to industry. Methane, the main component of natural gas, is frequently wasted through leaks or intentional releases during drilling operations. The public has 60 days to comment. With the 2018 election season looming and the 2020 presidential race on the horizon, Montanans can be assured of not receiving those annoying robocalls from politicians and advocacy groups. Spokesman for Montana Attorney General Tim Fox, Eric Sell, said the decision came down last week to upholding a Montana law. Last Friday, a federal district court judge here in Helena upheld the constitutionality of Montana's law prohibiting robocalls. Those are those automated phone calls you'll get oftentimes from uh, candidates running for office or for issue campaigns that uh, as soon as you pick up the phone, it's an automated message. That, that plays over the phone. Sell explained the reason for the court's decision. Back in 1991, the legislature passed a law prohibiting these types of calls. Last year, there was a challenge by a consulting firm out of Michigan that sought to strike down the constitutionality of these types of laws. So the judge ruled that this law is in fact constitutional and that there is a governmental interest in protecting individuals' privacy in their own home. Sell said it's fortunate that Montana has some clarity with the law during the election seasons to come. Our news talk time is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Bitter cold this morning with sub-zero wind chills will give way to sunshine and daytime highs in the 20s. Tonight, increasing clouds. Snow likely Wednesday with the snow accumulation up to an inch. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.